Hello everybody, uh, this is Mr. McAllen again, and um, tonight, or right now, we're going to go over um, some notes on how to solve trig equations and how to solve quadratic trig equations. So, we first have to notice the difference between a trig equation that's linear and a quadratic trig equation. And if you look, take a look at the equation I have right here, um, where I say root 3 of secant of x plus 2 equals 0, this is a linear trig equation because secant is raised just to the first power. There's no squared or cubed. So what we have to do in this case is we're going to solve for secant. So I'll have root 3 secant of x is equal to negative 2 and secant of x is equal to negative 2 over root 3 and now we've got to look for the x values that will make this happen. So I'm going to use my unit circle like we talked about um, earlier in an earlier video. And instead of looking for a secant value, I remember that with a unit circle, that my x coordinate is the cosine uh, ratio and my y coordinate is the sine ratio. So using uh, the fact that secant is equal to negative 2 over root 3, I can just use a reciprocal relationship and say the cosine of x is equal to negative root 3 over 2. And now I'm looking for any x coordinate where I have negative root 3 over 2. So this looks like it could be 1, but it's not negative. So I'm going to go over to this side and notice I see um, at the angle of 150 or 5 pi over 6, that works. So if I ask for the answer in radians, I'll, um, we'll use a radian amount. If I ask for the answer in um, degrees, we'll say 150 degrees. And now um, we have to find one more angle because we know that there have got to be for every, uh, there, there should be two answers for where the cosine can be a negative value. So I'm going to look down um, directly below. And again, I see I have a negative root 3 over 2 there. So my answer for that in radians is, um, I'll write x2 is um, 200, I'm sorry, for radians would be 7 pi over 6. And my answer in degrees would be 210 degrees. So that's how we, we handle linear trig equations. Um, how do you handle quadratic trig equations? Well, when you have a tri tri um, quadratic trig equation and you only have a squared term and no linear term, this is actually done by using um, square roots. So we'll say 4 sine squared of x is equal to 3. I'll solve for sine squared of x, and that'll be 3 over 4. And then to turn this into the sine of x, I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. So I'll have the square root of 3 over the square root of 4. Don't forget the plus or minus. Um, whenever you take the square root of a number, um, you've always got to include a plus or minus. So the sine of the angle x is equal to root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. So now I've got to look for any trig ratio where the sine value uh, can equal root 3 over 2 or negative root 3 over 2. So let me handle the first one. The sine of x is equal to positive root 3 over 2. I'm going to go back to my unit circle. So I'm just going to um, move that uh, picture. Well, let me. I'm going to pause, and I'll come back once I have it set up. Okay, so I have the uh, unit circle set up for us. Remember, this is something that at the beginning of a test or a quiz, um, we've gone over how to draw this rather quickly, and we've also done all the background work with how to use the unit circle in terms of. Um, where it comes from with 30, 60, 90 triangle, 45, 45, 90. So this is just a nice graphic organizer that will help us find these values quickly. Um, so the, where is the sine of x equal to root 3 over 2? Remember the sine of x deals with the, um, the y-coordinate. So um, the sine of x is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. So I'm going to look for root 3 over 2 in the y-coordinate. And there I see at angle 60 degrees, um, my uh, first answer for x will be um, root 3 over 2. And my second, I'm sorry, 
the angle value will be 60 degrees and uh, in radians I'll write that below that will be pi over 3 radians and my second angle where I have a sine ratio equal to root 3 over 2 is um, in the second quadrant and that will be at 120 degrees and that's also equal to 2 pi over 3 radians. Last but not least we have our last um, quadratic trig equation. Now this is one where you need to factor um, by using what we call the X method or AC method. So we're going to factor that real quick. So we got what multiplies giving negative 6, negative 5, adds to negative 5. Um, so those two numbers are going to be um, negative 6 and 1. So I'm going to rewrite the sine equation and we did practice uh, with this for quite a while. Um, so I'm just going to do it rather quickly. So then we're going to uh, do uh, the greatest common factor. So I'm going to take out a 2 sine of x and that will leave behind the sine of x minus 3 and then I'll take out just a 1 from the last one because there's nothing in common and that's going to be sine of x minus 3 so my two factors are going to be 2 sine of x plus 1 and sine of x minus 3 that has to equal 0 so what this means is I have two separate situations I have uh, I set 2 sine of x plus 1 is equal to 0 and sine of x is equal to 3 and I've got to set solve for each different sine of x equation I have the sine of x is equal to negative 1 half and I'm going to use my unit circle for that and I have the sine of x is equal to 3 which um, I don't know if you've noticed this but the sine of x can never be 3 and if you look at all the sine values the sine value uh, can only um, exist be the sine will only take on the values between 1 and negative 1 so this is there's no solution from this part I won't find it on my unit circle so now my um, so now I'm looking for where the sine ratio is equal to 1 half negative 1 half so I'm going to look at the y coordinates again so the y coordinates negative 1 half is right here at 210 or in radians that would be 7 pi over 6 and it's also equal to negative 1 half at um, 330 degrees from the unit circle and that would be uh, 11 pi over 6 radians.